All right, so I want to take a look at several examples of adding and subtracting rational expressions. This will be, uh, again, just several examples, uh, not necessarily comprehensive, but uh, enough to hopefully get the idea. Uh, so the general idea of adding and subtracting rational expressions is the first thing you need to do is determine the LCD for your expressions, which means you're going to factor the denominators. Uh, you're not going to factor the numerators as we did for simplifying, multiplying, and dividing, only the denominators. Uh, then what I want to do is convert to that common denominator by multiplying and missing factors. Uh, and then what I'm going to need to do is combine the expressions, which means uh, up on top I'll have something that will need to be multiplied out and combined to get a polynomial. Once I have that polynomial, I will try and factor the numerator if I can. And only then, after I have factored, will I try to divide out common factors. The other thing you need to note here, uh, since we now know a little bit more about this when we first talked about least common denominator, you need to consider restricted values. Um, restricted values are not always necessary, but they are useful in a lot of contexts, so that is why we want to think about them. All right, so uh, let's take a look at a simple example right here. I have here 3 over 10x to the fifth y squared minus 5 over 8xy to the fourth. So what I need to do first is figure out my LCD. Well, if I look at these denominators, uh, the LCD should not be too hard to figure out. I see 10 and 80, or excuse me, I see 10 and 8, and the uh, least common multiple for 10 and 8 shouldn't be too hard to figure out. I know that 10 and 8 are both divisible by 2 if I want to do the work on this. Uh, 10 is 2 times 5. Uh, 8 is 2 times 4. So clearly I need a 2, a 5, and a 4, or in other words, that is 40. Uh, for x to the fifth and x, well, I need the higher power of x because each denominator has to uh, be a factor of the LCD. It has to divide the LCD. So I need x to the fifth. And if I've got y squared and y to the fourth, then I need y to the fourth. I need the larger power. So this is, again, 40 x to the fifth, y to the fourth. So I want to think about what I need to do to change each of these. Well, this first expression is missing. I should have given myself a little bit more room here. This first expression is missing. Uh, what? Well, it needs a y squared. And additionally, I need a 4 for the 10. What does this need? Well, this needs uh, a 5 uh, to get that missing factor for the uh, integers. Uh, and additionally, I need x to the 4th to go from x to x to the 5th. Apologize for making my work a little bit messy and tight there. So let's go ahead and convert this. So I'm going to come right over here, try and keep my work a little bit neater now. 3 over 10 x to the fifth y squared, and I'm going to multiply in that missing factor of 4 y squared. Minus 5 over 8 x y to the fourth, and I'm going to multiply in the missing factor 5 x to the fourth. Okay. Now, once I understand this whole process of what's missing and how I'm multiplying this in, I will be able to cut down on my work, and I'll show that to you in the next example. What do I have up here? I can now combine these. These are pretty simple, so I'm going to go ahead and just multiply those numerators, and I get 12y squared minus 25x to the fourth over, what is this, 40x to the fifth, y to the fourth, my common denominator. Now, I would look to simplify this if I could, which means I would have to look at factors. Well, the numerator does not factor. There's no uh, common factor between these two. 12 and 25 are relatively prime. One has y's or one has x's. So I can't do anything there. This is already simplified. Now, again, I will make note of my restrictions. Since there were uh, powers of x and y in the denominator, no uh, interesting binomial factors, I just know that x cannot be 0 and y cannot be 0. Those are my restrictions. All right. So that's one example. I'm going to try to go through the next one a little bit quicker because I have five of these. You can stop watching as soon as you feel you're okay, but pay attention because the last few is where I run into really being able to simplify. Okay, the next one. 2m over m plus 5 plus 6 over 3m minus 4. So I need to think about, again, a least common denominator. Well, m plus 5, 3m minus 4, those are totally distinct factors. I can't take a common factor out of either one, and clearly they're not the same. So they are distinct factors. So my least common denominator will have to uh, be divisible by both of them. So it'll have to have both of those distinct factors. I will have to have m plus 5 times 3m minus 4 as my LCD. So what I'm going to do is take that first expression and multiply in what is missing. Well, what's missing from this? 3m minus 4. The second expression, 
Well, what's missing from 3m minus 4? m plus 5. So I'll multiply that into the numerator and the denominator. Now again, if you get this idea of multiplying in what's missing, you can pretty much go straight to this step. What I have is 2m times 3m minus 4 plus 6 times m plus 5 over my LCD. That's the idea here. I multiply in those missing factors, and what I should end up with is each of the numerators times those missing factors uh, combined over my LCD. Again, once you understand this process, you can pretty much go straight from here to here, just thinking about, well, what is missing from the LCD. All right, so now what do I have to do? I have to multiply out what's on top. I'm not going to write out every last bit of work here, uh, nor should you, because it's going to take a lot of extra space. So I'm going to figure out what this numerator is right here. This is 6m squared minus 8m plus 6m plus 30 which makes that 6m squared uh, minus 2m plus 30 over m plus 5 times 3m minus 4. Now, again, once I have this here, once I have completely uh, multiplied out that numerator, which, again, you have to do that. You can't simplify this here because it's not factored. I've multiplied it out. Now I would look to factors. So what would I do? You can take out a factor of 2 and you'll have 3m squared minus m plus 15. And you could try and factor that trinomial. I will tell you it does not factor. If you did try and factor it, you would need factors of 45 that add to negative 1. Of course, that doesn't make any sense. So there are no common factors, so I cannot simplify this. So this will simply be my final answer. So I'm going to make a note that this is my final answer. And I will make sure to write down my restrictions here. My variable is m. And based on that denominator, if m plus 5 equals 0, m would equal negative 5. So m cannot equal negative 5. And if 3m minus 4 equals 0, that would give me m is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit off screen. Uh, m cannot equal negative 5. Or from this factor, m cannot equal 4 thirds. All right? Each of those would give me a denominator of 0, which we know we can't have. All right, let's do a few more examples. Here, a little bit simpler, x plus 5 over 4x minus 2x plus 1 over 6x squared. Um, well, not simpler, but pretty simple. 4x, 6x squared. I see these denominators. I see 4 and 6. It's pretty easy to figure out a common denominator, a common multiple for 4 and 6. I know that 4 is 2 times 2, 6 is 2 times 3. So what I will need is a 2, a second 2, and a 3. Again. It makes sense if you think about it. They both have a 2, but this one has a second 2 where this one has a 3. I need all of those as factors. If I look at the x and the x squared, well, again, if each denominator has to divide my LCD, then what I need uh, is x squared. So what is this? This is 12x squared. Should make sense. What does this first uh, expression need? Well, to get to 12x squared, and I apologize again, I haven't given myself enough room. But this needs a 3 and an x. 6x squared needs simply a 2. So I'm going to convert this, and I'll show you what I mean by condensing the work a little bit. Since this first uh, expression needs only 3x, I'm going to multiply that in. And the second expression needs only 2, so I'm going to multiply that in. Now, no matter how you're doing this, I expect to see this step on your paper because the deal is when you're subtracting, uh, if you don't write it like this, most people are going to not distribute that negative properly. So what do we have up on top? Uh, so this is right here, I'm going to, again, use my space wisely. This is 3x squared plus 15x minus 4x minus 2. So that is 3x squared plus 11x minus 2. And again, what you would do at this point is look to see if you can factor the numerator. Uh, and again, that's a trinomial that does not factor. So this is going to be my simplest uh, possible answer. And again, if I think about restrictions, what can x not equal? Well, it cannot equal 0. All right. A little bit more complicated now. Here I have a denominator that actually has to be factored. 
Um, I see what's on top, but again, the idea is I have to find an LCD, which means I need to factor the denominator. So 2y squared plus 3y minus 20. If I wanted to factor that, I would need factors of negative 40 that add to uh, 3, which is, of course, uh, plus 8 and minus 5. So then when I do this, again, uh, I'll leave the work to you, essentially. But uh, I would need... 2y minus 5 times y plus 4 is what would give me this polynomial. So if I see that, if I have my denominators factored, I can tell you what the LCD is. I'm going to write it up here. My LCD, I need all those factors. I need 2y minus 5 and I need y plus 4. Okay? Um, <coughs> excuse me. What does this first expression need? Well, it already has both of those factors. The second expression, however, is going to need 2y minus 5. So I'm going to multiply that in. So what do I get here? I get 9 minus y minus the product of y plus 3 and 2y plus 5, 2y minus 5, excuse me, over my LCD, 2y minus 5 times y plus 4. Okay, um, so now what do I need? Well, I need to uh, multiply this out and subtract it. y plus 3 times 2y minus 5, uh, this is, I'll start with the 9 minus y, but y plus 3 times 2y minus 5 is 2y squared uh, plus 6 minus 5 is plus y minus 15. All right, um, so if I actually subtract that, I have 9 minus y minus 2y squared minus y plus 15. So all told, that is negative 2y squared minus 2y plus 24. All over 2y minus 5 times y plus 4. So again, I need to look to factor the numerator. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look to factor the numerator. So the numerator right here, if I have, uh, I can see that there is a leading negative. And what's more, there's a 2 in common to all of these. So if I take out that negative 2, I will be left with y squared plus y minus 12. And that's a simple polynomial to factor. What multiplies to negative 12 and adds to 1? Well, the correct answer is, of course, positive 4 and negative 3. And here we see our first example where this can actually be simplified. I see there is a common factor of y plus 4, so I can divide that out. And a simpler answer, I can leave the numerator factored or I can multiply it back out. Be aware there are usually multiple equivalent answers. Your denominator, though, we're going to want to leave factored, although here there's only one factor in it anyway. Uh, and I want to make note of my restrictions. Because again, this is only equivalent to the original problem. If y does not equal either negative 4 or from this factor, if I set that equal to 0, it's 0 is 5 halves. Okay? So that's what would make those equivalent. All right. Another example right here. Uh, again, I have two denominators that need to be factored. Uh, I'm going to start right here because this one's a little bit easier. What multiplies to 48 and adds to 14? Well, that is x plus 8 and x plus 6. This denominator over here can also be factored. You can check, but it is 2x plus 9 times x plus 6. So if I want to figure out my LCD, well, my LCD needs to be divisible by each of these factors. So I can see that these both have an x plus 6. So that needs to be one of the factors of my LCD. But then I see these other factors, 2x plus 9, x plus 9, x plus 8, excuse me. I will also need both of those. Okay? So that means this first expression needs an x plus 8. The second expression needs an, uh, a factor of 2x plus 9. So again, I'm going to jump straight to the conversion process. Since this first expression needs an x plus 8, I would multiply that into the numerator and the denominator. So there it is multiplied into the numerator. The second expression needs 2x plus 9, so I would multiply that into the numerator and the denominator. 
When I multiply it into the denominator, the whole idea is I get my LCD. x plus 6, 2x plus 9, x minus 8. All right. Now, it's going to take a little bit of work to multiply out that numerator. Uh, I'm just going to do it quietly right here. So I get that, and then when I combine this, I get 4x squared plus 21x minus 18 over my LCD. And again, there I see a numerator uh, that is factorable. Uh, if I try and factor that, what do I get? Well, if I did this with x plus 6 and 4x minus 3, I would find out that this does, in fact, work. That is the correct factorization. And then what can I do? I can divide out the common factors, x plus 6, and I'm left with 4x minus 3 over 2x plus 9 times x minus 8. And I'm also going to list the restrictions here. I have three different factors in the denominator, which means I should have three different restrictions. Uh, x cannot equal uh, negative 6. From 2x plus 9, I would get negative 9 halves. And from x minus 8, I would get 8. So those are my restrictions. So this is the idea of adding and subtracting. It's essentially the same idea as LCD. Again, you just need to be more careful. You need to watch out because problems could be uh, a bit trickier. Uh, now, I am going to try and do one more example here because there is something I forgot, which is kind of important. So I'm just going to write down something kind of random. Here I'm going to put, uh, let's just make it a 5 and a 3. doesn't matter. All right. I'm doing one more example to illustrate something very specific. If I factor these denominators, what multiplies to 49 and adds to negative 14? Well, the answer is, of course, negative 7 and negative 7. In other words, this is x minus 7 squared. What multiplies to 21 and adds to negative 10? Well, that would be negative 7 and positive, or excuse me, negative 7 and negative 3. All right. So when I'm trying to figure out the LCD, this is always a sticking point for some people. Since the common denominator, since the LCD needs to be divisible by both denominators, clearly these both have x minus 7 as a factor. But the first expression has x minus 7 squared. If the LCD is to be divisible by x minus 7 squared, then I need x minus 7 squared as a factor. I will also need x minus 3 as a factor to guarantee divisibility by the second denominator. So what does each of these need? This needs an x minus 3. This needs uh, a second x minus 7. So now I'm going to convert that. I'm going to use my space over here. I multiply x minus 3 into the first uh, expression, into the numerator and the denominator. And I multiply x minus 7 into the second expression, into both the numerator and the denominator. My LCD is x minus 7 squared times x minus 3. If you multiply this out, you will get uh, 8x minus 36 over x minus 7 squared times x minus 3. Now, I can factor that numerator by taking out a 4 and be left with 2x minus 9, which doesn't really help me. But I can factor it which is often very useful. And this will be the simplest version of this expression. What restrictions do I need? Well, the factors in my denominator were x minus 7 squared and x minus 3. So each of those admits a factor, or excuse me, a restriction. 
x cannot be 7, or x minus 7 squared would be 0. Uh, and x cannot be 3, or x minus 3 would be 0. Hopefully this has been helpful.